Uh, welcome, everybody, um, to today's talk by Annalisa, Annalisa Haik, and she's with, she has a company called Sustain, and she is uh, here uh, we're being sponsored by Planet New Canaan, and she's going to talk about cultivating a sustainable lifestyle. Annalise is a sustainability champion. She's the founder and CEO of Sustain, double N-E, a company dedicated to uniting, nurturing, and growing a community dedicated to sustainable living. She, her free website and marketing activities, she has newsletters, events, social media, personal sustainability pledges, serve to inform and empower consumers to live a more sustainably with the help of local member businesses. I encourage you to go onto her website and sign up for her weekly newsletter. It's so informative, it has so many tips, it has lots of information that you can use and find out what's going on in, the, in, in our area. And um, so now I am happy to, also I wanna thank Acme for donating the food and drink, so please help yourself. And um, I will now let Annalise show us how to move beyond recycling and using your reusable bag. She has a lot more to tell us that we can do. Oh yeah, thank you so much, Lynn. Thank you, everyone. Um, I am just so honored to be here today, Lynn and Planet New Canaan. Thank you much, so much for having me and the New Canaan Library. Thank you so much for hosting this event. Um, you're going to leave here really inspired, really jazzed, really empowered. You're going to walk away with 10 ideas to do this week, then more for this month, for the quarter, for the spring, for the summer. And you're going to say, oh my gosh, we kind of really need to rethink everything. Right? I think some of you already know that. How many people already know we need to rethink everything? Yeah, okay. So... So I'm gonna go really, really fast. If you need me to slow down, just, ra just raise your hand and I'll also do q and I'm gonna be showing you a lot of things on the table that are solutions to some of our biggest problems, our waste problems, and waste problems are climate problems. Okay, we'll talk about that soon. Okay, so this is a, a snapshot of por portion of the sustain.com website. So we have products and services categorized in nine different lifestyle categories, ranging from health, wellness, and fitness to food and wine and supplement services like architects and sustainable investing experts. Those exist, believe it or not. Um, I encourage you to just go on and browse. Um, here is a depiction of some of the businesses that we have, and you'll see it's, it's everything from food waste recycling and textile recycling to electric vehicles and very technical to smart living ecosystems with solar and battery storage using Tesla power walls. So we have quite a range here for, for you to choose from. So as Lynn mentioned, we have, we have the free um, directory of businesses, a blog, a newsletter, a calendar of events, not just mine, you know, sustains, but our members come and post their events. So like Wakeman Town Farm is one of our members and they're doing a free workshop that will enable you to leave with seedlings of milkweed to plant in your garden. So that's on the 10th at night and that's free. So really cool stuff. Um, to get you going. And obviously advocacy alerts because I am definitely a poster too. Um, we have to go down two paths. We have to go down the personal path where we make new choices and we also have policy paths. And those policy paths change in our local, state, and federal government. So any advocacy that you can do, if, even if it's making a phone call, writing a letter, showing up for a meeting, sending in testimony in Hartford, showing up in Hartford to testify. The session just started, so there's gonna be ample opportunity to do that. Um, we have a new feature on our website called Personal Sustainability Pledges. There are 50. This way, you don't need to sit there and say, now, what did Annalisa say about what we should do with the pollinators? Just go look at the pledges. They're all there. There are 50 of them. They're free to take. You can join the community and get support in the community. 
Um, one of them is planting milkweed for monarchs. And if you want to do that again, you can get a jump start in that event. The other thing is there is an upcoming event. I'm going to give you the information in a minute while Doug Tallamy is speaking. So he's a professor, he's a conservationist, he's an environmentalist. He's the one who made the big connection between our health and the health of the land, water, sea. You, the two are inextricably entwined. We will talk more about that, but that's gonna be a great event. I'll show you. Oh, so here, I just wanna show you this quickly. So uh, my lilac tree got split in half in an orange in a couple of pollinator plants. That became the joy of my summer last year. I had put in all kinds of plants, including um, uh, butterfly weed, um, milkweed for the plants, and for the um, uh, monarchs, and they came and they laid their eggs and they had caterpillars. It was just an absolute delight to go out there every morning and do a checkup. You know, I go instead of checking on babies, I don't have babies anymore, I would check on the pollinators and see what's going on in the garden. Um, so, you know, you live in a great place. I'm assuming most of you live in New Canaan. Is anyone from outside New Canaan? Okay. What town? Can you just shout it out really quick? South Salem, New York. South Salem? Darianne. Darianne? Westport. Westport Stamford? Okay. You guys are all doing really good work too. And here are a couple of the ways. Here, you, of course, you have Planet New Canaan, which um, I recommend you, you know, follow, join, get involved in all the activities that they're doing. Um, New Canaan just joined Sustainable Connecticut and one of your leaders from Planet New Canaan. Is she here? Oh, bravo! That, that is absolutely fabulous because Sustainable Connecticut gives you the framework that is being used across the state to become a sustainable town, and there are various levels of certification. So, you guys going for the gold? We're, we're going for the bronze, right? We're going for the bronze, right? Okay, <laughs> wonderful. Well, you can probably get there pretty quickly if you do some of the things I mentioned in here. Um, BYO New Canaan, and that is really important. We got a plastic bag ban passed at the state level, and there are local ordinances as well. And it really was the local ordinances that got the state law put into effect. So bravo on that. Um, and then the pollinator pathway, that is absolutely huge. Everyone can join the pollinator pathway. We're gonna talk about that. Um, you're basically going to create a haven for pollinators in your yard. And pollinators are um, birds, butterflies, bees, um, anything that flies and bats, anything that flies and goes from one plant to another or that, um, you know, is looking for habitat to procreate or even to overwinter. Um, and then the library. So you'll see down on the left, there's a New Canaan Nature Center collection for corks going on. The Doug Tallamy event is March 3rd. And um, Planet New Canaan, you're a co-host. Yes. Um, that is really great to go to. If you go to that, that would be good to layer on top of what I'm going to talk about. You can do in your own yard. He'll give you even more concrete ideas about what to do. And then February 12th, the biggest little farm at the Darien Library. And um, the last one is obviously the BYO New Canaan. Um, anything you can do to encourage other people to practice BYO is really awesome. So this is the pollinator pathway. Um, this is one of our pledges. Um, again, it's pollinatorpathway.org. This is not a sustained endeavor. We, we're, we're a partner, we support it. So this is what happened in my yard in that patch of dirt I showed you earlier. I, and so those are two great plants to put in your yard. The butterfly weed and the echinacea. So you're, you're beautifying your yard. You're creating a, a habitat 
for the, the pollinators which are endangered. We, the number of birds, the number of insects has plummeted. It's not just monarchs that are endangered, it's everyday little things that buzz around. They did this test where they said, oh my gosh, where are all the bugs that used to splat on the windshield? They're gone. So in that whole process, what we've discovered is we need to get the pesticides off as well. So we're gonna to talk to you about how to naturally fertilize your yard. But we are gonna start with the biggest, baddest waste problem we have, and that is plastic. Only 9% of plastic is recycled. We were told a lie. We were. They put all these beautiful numbers and symbols on the plastic and said everything is recyclable. It's not. And then when China slammed the door shut on our garbage, all of a sudden we were stuck with it. And now we have a problem. We have a waste problem and we have a fiscal problem. So many of the municipalities, Greenwich is now talking about pay as you throw. Pay as you throw is it's not just fill up how many garbage cans as you want as one flat fee, it's you play, pay by the bag. That's actually good because when you pay by the bag, you say, wait a minute, do I really need that? Wait a minute, that creates a lot of waste. Hold on, I think I can get the food out. I think I can get the textiles out. And those are some of the things we're gonna talk about that are great actions. So let's talk about really quickly Getting the plastic out of our lungs. So, water bottle. Who carries around a reusable water bottle? Okay, maybe 40%. Wow, nobody does. That is so many. That is the environmental justice community situation, and then we thought of one that was extremely to your reusable shopping bags, which I'm hoping you're all using, right? Yes? Anybody still stuck on plastic? Raise your hand. Let me know. <laughs> Papers, 
first thing is have to start and keep on repeating. So if you can body stop you, let's say you work twice, try to stop breathing and, and you actually ask your students, let's go to walk with students and say, could you please just stop for a second? Because we don't want it. Um, the other thing is plastic, a lot of the plastic that you think is not recyclable is, like who knows if this is recyclable. So you can't throw it in a blue bin. If you're recycling bin, you can't throw it in a blue bin. Plastic bags and plastic film, which is called plastic film, you can't throw it in there. Is it recyclable? Can you be convenient? Oh, you can use glass and stuff.
see that because you can't be cross contaminated from it and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. So then you end up with this classic cleaner that's not recyclable. So yeah. how do you test for and that? And I think that that's a closer issue because the whole thing is to allow people to spend their money. Mostly in items, mm -hmm. sterile peanut butters or olive oil, all this other stuff, so why not be going to Right. So I like the closer issue. Sure. And I like your logic. That's a nice one. And I would definitely do that again. Yeah. One thing I can do is I can get the gel packers and file it away in the back of yeah. the drawer. And I can go for a paper. scoop on the plastic, right? We need to just get rid of it because we can't recycle it. It's really bad. Yeah. What is plastic garbage bags in the kitchen? Yeah. What's the alternative? The alternative is get your food waste out of the garbage and you won't need them. Really? You won't have anything wet and nasty in there. Just we, when I was a kid, we didn't have a plastic liner in in the kitchen garbage. It was not because we, I grew up composting. So I think that's the easiest solution. Really, you will have nothing gross in there. But there are biodegradable bags. There are, but they're not a solution. Let me tell you why. A, they don't actually biodegrade, and B, the only way that they're going to be able to biodegrade is if they are put underground, and that's not what we do with our garbage. We burn it, which stinks. So, yeah, and they sound great, but unfortunately, they don't really provide a solution. Yep. So I feel this. I mean I, I buy a lot of clothes. Yeah. Vintage classic. And I have heard that those are not recyclable. Is that true? So um, I would go into whole, where do you buy your frozen Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's. Um, I don't think they have any recycling in that store, do they, for consumers? Well no, but I mean I I take mine to Ashley. So I'm just saying yeah. I do. I put it in there too. I do. I said, if you sold it to me, you're getting it back. <laughs> That's my philosophy with Whole Foods. If you sold it to me, my question is really though that um, I, I had heard that these bags were treated with them because a, a, you know the food in a frozen food somehow it's. It's possible. I mean, a lot of things have liners in them, like the takeout cups for coffee. A lot of them have liners in them, which are not healthy for you anyway. Um, PFOS, PFAS is lying in a lot of these things. Um, so I would say um, you could call the manufacturer, but all plastic has additives in it. So that soft plastic container you showed me, that doesn't have a hardening agent in it that some other plastics would have, and you can't mix the two of them together. It's a huge problem we have right now. When you have two different types of plastics being mixed, they can't be recycled. Same thing with fabric. If you have an item made out of mixed um, materials, it's very, very hard for them to recycle them at end of life. Okay, so plastic bags we did, we did this, we did this, um, zero waste, we did the bags. Um, we do have a store called BD Provisions in Fairfield where you can go and bring your own containers and you zero them out at the um, counter, the old magic marker on the bottom, um, Sharpie on the bottom, what the weight is. You buy your, your items and then they will, um, weigh them minus the weight of, okay, it's called tearing, and they'll tear the item, okay? Um, let's, we talked about takeout containers. I just wanna talk about one more thing here that I missed, and that is this. It's a food trash bag. So in talking about plastic form that you can't recycle, you can recycle the dishes to the drop bag. Um, so these come in 
that area and you have a lot of control. Then the last piece I wanted to mention was the budget. They make um, three trays that are compostable. So if we're going to compost your food waste, this is how I do it in my house. Okay, take out some cleaner that's compostable. We'll go right in here along with the food waste. And then I dump it into the big bin that Chris has composted. And then we pick it up and put it in here. Great. Then you put oil and fat. one is furniture pods and it's too much olive oil and lots of plastic and um, they are so crispy so I reuse this over and over and over again and I make them out of my products and save money um, and I you know, sell them to culinary clubs and stuff like that too and yeah exactly. exactly and they're really tough to, to recycle
also tends to compromise the efficiency of incineration yeah, process. So you really want to get that out of there. Yeah. So that's how it improves that. If everyone sees that, yeah. you're subtracting and diverting from disposal. Make sure everybody can see that. Diverting from disposal. more money than I spend now on all this stuff, which is pretty interesting. Um, one more thing I want to talk about is plastic dry cleaning bags to insert in the stem um, <clears throat> to kind of get that down. So um, one of our members is Sabbath Hair Cleaner, and they have locations in Norwalk and Darien, and they'll also come and pick up. You can opt into their sad bag program so that your dry cleaning will come back to you in a reusable bag. And they'll also take back all of your hangers, tissue paper, everything. So you put your dirty clothes in there, you put your hangers, your tissue paper, et cetera, insert to them. And they'll either reuse the hangers or they'll recycle them because they don't go in the hangers. Yeah, yeah. And just so you know, you change things if you want to dump them because you want to liberate all the For this, I think it's on this one. Uh, nope, it's on the other one. Uh, the 
Thursday textiles I think it's way back in the beginning if you look for this truck there you go and this group takes everything stuffed animals pillows used sheets pillows four by six rugs old speakers old pocketbooks old felt all of it we'll take it all is that because of this area that's there you will find one of those trucks at your transfer station in the center Cayuga, etc. Okay, so we're going to flip really fast to um, the next challenge. We we talked a bit about this. Um, there are a bunch of companies that will take back their clothing. Eileen Fisher Renew is one of them. Um, they repair it and resell it. Patagonia will take things back to repair them. A lot of the really uh, LSM will take back their clothing and repair it. So when you buy things. They'll give you a story about it. They'll give you a story. And I know they read these things. Yeah. Um, the, um, so Eileen Fisher has an, uh, an entire line of um, clothing that they've taken back and resold. Um, and then they already also have another line after that that's been stolen and taken back. So, um, and I really wish we had some. There's a few 
take off early too and have them and stay out and um, make sure I've got a new pair to add as well. That would be really great. Um, okay, zero waste. Two more zero waste things I want to show you really quickly. Um, the paper gift wrap, very hard to recycle. Company uh, in Big Apple, Family Owned. Uh, they do very good chocolate, but they raise it in a way where you are touching it. They came with my logo on it, and um, and it's got this elegant shape. The paper does. It's an elegant shape, and um, it's very very chocolate. And this is made out of new paper, new recycled. rest of this. So this, the textiles. So the food is 2020 to 5%. The textiles are almost 6%. You could get a third of your waste out of the waste stream. Yeah. And that we need to think about this because page to throw is going to come. We're going to be charged by the bag because it's so expensive. And because 40% of our state's waste is being processed in Hartford, and that facility is old, it's broken, and they're at loggerheads as to how to move forward. And DEEP, you know, our Department of Energy and Environmental Protection was charged with diverting from disposal um, 60, or 60 or 65 percent of our waste by 2024. Um, it's still at 35 percent. They haven't moved the needle 1 percent. But so you guys, you can do it actually in your own home, your own businesses. Mm -hmm. um, so there's the truck again, $100 a ton for schools, for any nonprofit, the library could do it, anybody can do it, museums. Um, again, we did that. This is what an industrial composting facility looks like. Um, we talked about a couple of these as well. So. When you're cleaning out your home, uh, please don't think of the dump as the place to take old furniture you don't want. Um, the junk luggers will come and they have a remix market at a 10,000 square foot warehouse facility where they hire local artisans to repaint furniture. So they take brown furniture and they chalk paint it, et cetera, give it a new life. Okay, so they extend the life of things. So they will donate, recycle, or upcycle what they pull out of your home. Um, and down on the right, uh, lower right-hand corner, that is a blower fan used in a um, home energy assessment. And the cheapest energy is the energy we don't use. So when we talk about waste reduction, we should also talk about waste in energy. So if you haven't got an energy audit, I recommend you get one. They will give you up to $1,000 worth of value when they're there because they will put weather stripping and caulking and other things on right when they're there. Um, it's $75 right now, which is really cheap. So New England Smart Energy, women-owned business. They're one of our members. They're one of the biggest providers in the area. They do a great job. Um, food. Oh, food. <sighs> We've been hearing about food for so long. I'm going to make it really simple because this is this is where I came from before I started Sustain. Industrial agriculture is destroying the climate and our health. Period. Full stop. <laughs> That's it in a nutshell. 
So anything you can do to not participate in industrial agriculture, especially one that has to do with livestock, 82% of all farmed land is farmed for livestock. That's why they're burning down the Amazon to put cattle on there for China. No, just no, it has to stop. So if you're gonna eat meat and you're gonna eat dairy products, choose local. And I know that Walter Stewart does an amazing job with our local farms. You can probably get eggs from Millstone Farm year round there, right? Yeah, so this is just, just no, just say no. Um, um, and anything you can do to buy local food, you have an amazing farmer's market in season. There is a winter farmer's market at Gilberti's um, in Westport, and you can get pretty much everything you need for a meal there. It's really fantastic. It's on Saturdays from 10 to 2. Um, greenhouse gas emissions from the transportation sector are a huge problem. Um, electrification is happening. Uh, electrification of um, light, medium, and heavy-duty vehicles is now happening. It's, it's more abroad than it is here, but it is finally happening. Electric school buses, electric city buses are happening, and electric cars are plentiful and available, and um, Tesla is doing great because everyone's just decided they want their cars all of a sudden now that they're more affordable, and I'm one of them. So I drove a Nissan Leaf for three years. That's a uh, no, fully electric car. It's a BEV, battery electric vehicle. And then in December, um, my husband and I decided that we were going to trade in our second car, <laughs> our, our uh, hybrid, and we're down to one car for two people. It's a Tesla Model 3, and I absolutely love it. It's amazing. Um, I highly recommend electric vehicles. They are very easy to maintain. You fuel them at home. You plug it in, you charge, you go wherever you need to go. If you're going a long distance, you can charge your battery up more. You have the ability to do that on your phone app or in your car. You can say, I want to use more of the battery. And you can charge it up to over, my charge is 230 miles. So I went up to Boston and it was great. I didn't, I didn't even need to stop. It was incredible. I couldn't do that in a Nissan Leaf. So our state has um, cheaper rebates, C-H-E-A-P-R. Um, they are $1,500 for battery electric vehicles. They used to be $3,000. Why they lowered it, we don't know. We certainly didn't advocate for that. Um, I'm part of the Electric Vehicle Club of Connecticut, and the club is a member of the Electric Vehicle Coalition, which is... Uh, joined by a bunch of very large nonprofits, including the Connecticut Fund for the Environment, Save the Sound, Sierra Club, et cetera. And we asked for used vehicles to be included, and we got what we wanted. So used electric vehicles are now going to be eligible. The website is being updated right now. So you can get a used Nissan Leaf, one of the originals, I guess like a 50-mile range for like five or $6,000. And then imagine if they put like a $500 rebate on that. So we're talking about democratizing electric vehicles. Yeah. Um, these are some really cool <laughs> the BMW and the, um, the X. Yeah. Uh, fossil fuels. So that's another thing in your home, in your businesses. Um, we really need to get rid of the fossil fuels. And it's not so easy, is it? So one of the things that we can look at is solar. Um, there are some companies that provide free solar. Uh, Trinity Solar is one of them. They're one of our members, T-R-I-N-I-T-Y. Lori Scala is the contact there. She's in Fairfield. So a lot of women in sustainability. They're really just doing amazing work. Um, so anything you can do to get your home electric, get a heat pump in there, get solar, um, get your house wrapped, uh, just get rid of the fossil fuels, and same thing with your vehicles is amazing. This is uh, one of the homes that Trinity Solar did. Um, so, um, okay, and then um, very cool in your yard, um, the lower left, that is an, a robot mower. So, this, it perpetually mows your lawn, so it's always a moving height, and it senses flower <coughs> beds and goats and dogs and everything else, so you have zero emissions lawn care. It's very cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, they just sent me a quote, I have to open it up. Um, and then this is over here. more solar created than what you need to 
goes back to the grid where you get a credit. It's called net metering. In this system, the excess goes to your Tesla power wall, so it's available to you when you need it. So at night when the sun isn't shining and you want to run your dryer and charge your car, you use it there. So um, they, they won a bunch of awards. That's super exciting. And then um, down in the right-hand corner, that's a home by Trillium Architects in Ridgefield. And Trillium is a multi-award winning um, net zero passive home, um, either from fresh construction or retrofit. So they're a really excellent resource for anyone looking for a complete redo. These are some other resources we talked about, the dry cleaners, the transfer station. Um, you have a bunch of thrift shops in towns. Definitely have anything of value, take it to the thrift shop first for donation or consignment. Um, the um, New Balance store and Athletic Shoe Factory will take back items. Again, Walter Stewart, check them for the local food, check them for the, um, uh, some of the, the zero waste items that we talked about, uh, curbside compost, and then the coffee. Now, you have a new Canaan Moms Facebook page where people can sell things, but there's a buy nothing project as well. So I live in Fairfield, and because it's so big, we have a buy nothing north and a buy nothing south, but you guys could probably just have one page. Um, and on the buy nothing project, you can just put up anything that you don't want, and your neighbors can come and take it. This, it's amazing. It is really incredible. It's beautiful. And then the lower right-hand corner, that's one of those Swedish dish, dish cloths. Um, okay, again, New Caden is a leader. Make sure you, you know, get on any mailing lists, um, that you show up, participate in these events. Your corks, take them to the New Caden Nature Center. Corks should never go in the garbage. That's organic material, and it has value. It can be reused. Um, and then Doug Tallamy, that, that is um, a treat to hear Doug Tallamy talk. Uh, one of his books is in the back, um, books by Naomi Klein and Bill McKibben. They don't have On Fire by Naomi Klein. Um, it's On Fire, The Burning Case for the Green New Deal. I just finished it. Fabulous read. Highly recommend it. You'd be like, oh, I can't believe this. Wow. Here's what's going on. And this is a zero waste fair. So this is a really fun event to bring everyone to. Bring, put your textiles in there, put your small home goods, a small appliance, you know, you have a broken power washer, that's the place to bring it, a broken mower or weed whacker, that's the place to bring it. Um, and um, let's see, what else do we have? Oh yeah, 10 actions. Okay, I'm gonna drill through this really fast. Do we have a couple of minutes for this? Okay.
it might even exist in some places, much like how milk used to be delivered. You'd, you'd leave your bottles outside and then they'd return yeah. them filled. There's a whole bunch of major manufacturers <laughs> who are coming together yeah. and we will have the ability to leave our, our you know, things that we buy in bulk, like uh, sheet detergent and, and washing machine stuff. And, and we will put them outside, they will take them, replace them, and bring them in. I believe it's called Loop. Loop. And, and I think it's something that we should investigate yeah. in our area. Mm -hmm. It might even exist and we should find a way. Yeah, no, I think anyone can offer to that. Um, there's also a Netflix subscription service where you're selling secondhand clothing, selling secondhand items that are organic. Um, you can subscribe to that through our blog or through the organization. I would Thank you. 
decided what the vacation should be called. And all she wanted was like, you know, learn to flip a dish. because she swears her garbage company does not recycle. She says she doesn't see them putting the bags into the separate sections of the truck. And, and I don't know if they're actually going in there and separating them at, at the trash site. I mean, do you know? Or well, she attached the container. Right? Yeah. 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 Yeah.